Welcome to the Meddling with Nature audio only vlog. Each week, our little crew discusses the how to and why to of the naturalist arts, from taxidermy to wood grain, arachnophobia to apiculture. No stone is left unturned. This has some sensitive themes and sensual language. It's not a warning, it's our quality assurance. Welcome, listeners. This is part two of our Taxidermy 101. Last week, we covered everything from how to look like a superhero badass and jumping out of your car to pick up something delectable off the road to the uh, the first stages of tanning. So now, we're going to uh, go all the way to the end. Enjoy. So you finish salting the animal. It's mm-hmm. all ready. It's set to go. Yep. Um, I'm going to assume just that you dump the salt out. Pour it in the garbage can. You yeah, the used salt. salt. Yes. You. Yeah. So you don't. You don't <laughs> you actually. You dump the salt. Food. You open the new salt can and you dump it in the garbage. <laughs> you put it. That in, is. You put it in your neighbor's. Process. You put it in your neighbor's yard. <laughs> you know, like. Actually, you know, in the wintertime, I I admit sometimes I will dump that on my sidewalk. No joke. I did that yeah, this year. That's great, isn't it? On my way <laughs> out was like, man, it was literally snowing, and I was like, this is just a great opportunity to just pave a pathway to my car for tomorrow morning. Yeah. And I, it does. Does it make the ground greasy? I mean, it's yeah, a little bit. It's worse than frozen, for yeah. God's sake. It's so it's better yeah. nice. Is it not slippery? Well, it's not like it, the, the, the salt does not carry you it's know, not an like entire one part ounce blood of lard parts. with yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so then you salt your... Dear listeners, what do you do with your, <laughs> your spent yeah. salt? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that would be a good thing to Margaritas? ask. Margaritas? Yeah. <laughs> Every once in a while. Bloody Marys. Just <laughs> round the rim. Literally bloody. <laughs> so, okay, what? So, okay. So, so now you've got the skin. You got the skin. That's lightly salted. All right, because I'm going to bet there's still some salt in there. Yeah, there is. Um, so what do you do now? Do you, do you take that skin and just wrap it around something and... Yeah, so really. You know those, those 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 cans of of uh, great stuff, the the polyurethane foam you use for sealing cracks. Mm-hmm. You just get like ten of those and put it in every single orifice and just press the trigger all at the same time. Whew. And then you're done. That's it. And then you just take crayons and make the eyes. It requires you're good. a lot of interns. <laughs> <laughs> it requires it requires uh, Shiva actually. Um, from there, now now you've got it prepared. The the skin is ready to become acidic. So you're going to tan it now. pH1, baby. pH1. So now you've begun the tanning process. Yes. So do you have, like, a lab? <laughs> um, <laughs> I have Because I feel very... like there's a lot of chemicals involved in tanning. I have a metal cabinet that used to hold a boa constrictor, and now it holds chemicals, yeah. And they don't necessarily play well together. It was your boa constrictor yeah, yeah, When Taylor lived, yeah, we had... There's just, oh, like, a full-size boa constrictor there? I like, don't remember. Alive? Nine, ten feet, yes. It was alive? Police had, had confiscated it from a crazy person, and Taylor was part of the reptile zoo, so we housed this damn thing for, like, several months. I mean, you know, throwing ox to it and all sorts of stuff. Um, but anyway, so that supply <laughs> cabinet used to hold a snake. Uh, but no, not so much a lab. You just don't want to be stupid. Yeah. Which is interesting you ask that because there are taxidermists out there who are working in commercial taxidermy that they send their skins off to be tanned, you know, to what they imagine, I guess, as being like a lab. You know what I mean? They send it yeah. off to like... Some scientist is gonna do, some, you know, whatever. Yeah. They go through this chemical process that the the taxidermist isn't, you know, they're not capable. That's true of too. I mean, so like a lot like, of taxidermists do that. What, yes, well, a lot of commercial taxidermists do, and why? Because it saves them an ass load of time. We had to do that for the Patagonia Mara, yeah, uh, because there wasn't time. There wasn't actually enough physical time to tan the specimens, so we had to make them out of rabbits that were already tanned, mm-hmm. and and yeah, lots of lots of complicated crap there, but. Yeah. But for the most part, that's why the turnaround time is so large for commercial taxidermists, up to six months, sometimes longer depending on what it is, is because they're accounting in the time that they're getting from the tannery, which is three to four months. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a lot nicer when you don't have to tan your own stuff, I'm sure. But I like 
to make sure I know exactly what the weaknesses of, are of the skin, and you get a much better, more professional result yeah. with yourself um, when you have one I thing. I imagine you can time. control it better because of you course you can. can. Keep an yeah. Eye yeah, which is why, in a lot of ways, it is almost like a tiny lab you're setting up. I mean, you yeah. really are kind of setting up this little chemistry kind of, and it is in a way a, a, a lab, I would mm-hmm. say. He doesn't have a lab in his house where he puts on his white coat and, you know, changes his shoes. Mm-hmm. And, his black yeah. coat. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and so, but, you, you, you go. So, so the acid is the first part. Well, the first part, obviously, is the mm-hmm. salt when we're yeah. looking, because that is chemically changing things. Yeah. Um, the acid is the next part. So, so, so what you're doing with the acid is is you are really um, disintegrating a lot of the protein bonds that the salt is is giving you way for, mm-hmm. and th- that has to be a very uh, salinated um, batch as well. So it's like two pounds of, of salt per one gallon of, of water, and then half an ounce of acid. So you're what kind of acid? Uh, this actually, th- and the ratios kind of depend on what acid you're actually using, oxalic or, or um, um, you can actually use acidic acid. You can use uh, battery acid. <laughs> online kids, go online. You yeah. use battery acid. There's a lot of people on Reddit who think they can use battery acid, and they can. Yeah, but you also have to be uh, pretty careful just with with you know maintaining your pH and understanding where that is. And certain acids do certain things, such as you know hydrofluoric acid, not something you want to put in skins. Yeah. <laughs> So a number of different acids will work. Okay. Vinegar probably even would work. Yeah. Okay. Don't so, know that though. So smelly. Yeah. Yeah. So smelly. That'd be awful. So you've got. Um, I'm assuming you're doing this like in a bathtub. No, probably a. Uh, yes. You're doing it in your bathtub. I. What I, kind of bathtub no, are you no, using? No, 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 no. I use the same. You be careful. Tupperware that you do, but I will not do it outside of my bathtub. So my, <laughs> you you are taking a shower at the same time. Like, I will always be bathing. I feel so icky. <laughs> I will always be bathing during this process. <laughs> my little rubber ducky. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just with your legs wrapped around him. <laughs> but I'm also wearing like one of those hats back back full of suits that zips yeah. up to my neck. Okay, so you've got your big sterilite container full mm-hmm. of water and salt and acid. And you throw your and it's important that it's a plastic tub and not a metal. Yeah, that's why I was just that's talking about the bathtub. That's what I was, kind of getting at was, what I was talking about the bathtub. You have it like chipped metal bathtub <laughs> or something like that. The, the metal will react. I mean, think about how batteries work. I mean, Has anyone seen Breaking Bad? Yep. <laughs> that's seen Breaking Bad. A very yes. no, yeah, different thing. That's no, <laughs> no, no, no. Well, no, it's that's acid. What we're talking about. <laughs> I don't no. know. Did you, have you seen it? Yes. I don't. I don't know how you make meth. So or no, no, no. They were they, oh, no, they they were dissolving. It wasn't about the meth. That was dissolving a body, and we're talking about hydrofluoric. And I <laughs> made that joke already. Hang on. All right, move on. So, I'm saying metal reacts with acid. This okay. is where we have, yeah. you know, batteries and things. So you want to use a plastic container. You need to use plastic because it's not like you will all of a sudden turn your dead coyote into an electric eel. Yeah. Uh, but it will neutralize. It'll start neutralizing the acid. It'll corrupt the acid. You won't be able to maintain a good pH, and so you need to use plastic. So, would you recommend getting, like, some pH strips? Uh, Yeah, and there's also automatic pH readers. Uh And anybody who's real, real serious about it will just stick their hand in and feel it. Jeremy can tell by taste. I can tell by taste. You taste it? Reacts with my feelings. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Grandpa. Um, I actually bring a sample of my acid over to his house for him to taste it. He really really tastes it? Wow. Do you taste it? No, I don't really really taste it. I always have cuts on my hand from everything I'm doing, so I can usually feel it. But that's not a good way to gauge pH. I follow proper recipes and know generally... I, I have a very, very, very good track record with tanning. Yeah. Doesn't mean I can't fuck it up someday, but I've got a very good track record with making very good skins, and so I don't actually use pH strips or a tester, but those things are system. available. I got my system. Right. But those things are always available um, in catalogs or even at pharmacies, things like that, for people to use. Mm-hmm. And depending on the acid, depending on the things, I mean, your pH is going to be, you know, you're going to want to run like one, two max, but okay. one, two. All right. So, now that you've done basing. Yeah, and that's 72 hours of that, and... During that 72 hours, you also want to pull your skin out every day and flesh it more. Pull more shit off as much as you can because it becomes stiffer as it's in the acid. Okay. Um, yeah. Dude, that, what do you... you it's just, complicated, do I you know. use any tools to scrape? My fingers. Your fingers. And I try not to use scissors because it's too easy to cut little crescent-shaped holes in the skin. Yeah. Uh, and it's too... If the skin is very large, then it's too messy to put on... 
you know, like the fleshing wheel for me. Okay. Um, there are other instruments that can do this stuff too for professional taxidermists that, that are kind of assembly line running, but I, I use hand tools mostly. Okay. So, so it's been 72 hours. Mm -hmm. Your animal is based. No, it's not base. It's it's acidic. It's acidic. Your right. animal is acidic. Yes. That very right. acidic. Very acidic. I, I mean, acidic. you could feel. Yeah, you could feel it on well, your hand. If, when you put your hand. If it's that. It's pH one. Like, more so than it's acidic. That's what I guess you're getting. Yeah. yeah. So you're all about the base. So about we're, we're going to move on no to the base. Acid. <laughs> so now we're going to base it. Okay. So you, you you dump that water out into the garden. You. you and <laughs> <laughs> I just assumed you bottled it and sold it. Yeah. So. So then, so you you dump it out. Do you, you rinse the? You put a little baking soda in it actually mm -hmm. to neutralize it first. Okay. okay. And then you pour it down your pipes and it's fine. Okay. You wash it. The animal. Do you wash the, the fur at this? Oh point? well, yeah. You you wash it till water runs clear. Uh huh. Like just plain water. Yeah, you don't want to use many soaps just because there's a lot of times, especially like the worst thing you get is like Arm and Hammer soap. Uh, because Arm & Hammer is made with baking soda. It's like, oh, you're basifying your damn skin while you're washing. You don't want to do that. You, yeah. you want to go ahead and just rinse it with plain water and then put it in your washing machine on the spin cycle. Um, are you using hot water or cold water? Cold. Christ, use cold. Never use hot. Okay. So you got your cold water going. Mike. Then. The more you know. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 now you need to, 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 to what do you do next? What do you do so next? so once you've you washed it clearly, you know, you got most of the most of the old um, acid out, so now you're gonna basify that. Uh, so it's it's basically just putting some baking soda, obviously there's ratios. Baking soda with the same amount of clear water. You throw your skin in there for very limited amount of time, twelve to fifteen minutes, very short. That's yeah, it, okay. that's all it takes. It should fizzle a little bit, it should feel nice on your hands and uh -huh. yeah. Okay, so now that it's been 20 minutes. No, 12 to 15. 12 to 15 minutes. Yeah. Again, surface tanning. That's, that's, that's why you don't want to keep the base in there because it will start to surface tan in the same way that we would, will talk about birds someday. Um, it, it, it will create a kind of impenetrable crust if you leave it in there too long. So you gotta, you gotta get it out of the base within 12 to 15 minutes. Like just, just the right amount of time. Okay. Where it's flexible again. All right, so it's coming out of the base. Coming out of the base, then we uh, then we go into washing again, getting the base out. We want to make sure we get all of the base out here because we're going to go back into a, a weaker style of acid because uh, tannin is an acid. Mm -hmm. um, tannin, tannin balm tree. It's you know preserved it within trees. That's why it's uh, it's called tannins. And so from there we go ahead and throw that in. Uh, I, I use a, a tanning. A uh, chemical called lutein F, but there's all sorts of different types of tannins. There's also, oh god, would, long story short, lots of different methods for this. Lots of different mm -hmm. tanning preparations, whether it be metallic or organic vegetable. Uh, I use lutein F, and so that's in there for about 12 hours, and then, uh, bam, you have a tanned skin. Okay, so now you've got your tanned skin. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that you need to do to the skin before it's ready to become taxidermy? Whip it and whip it good. There's a lot you have to do. Whip it and whip it good okay. is actually true. So, right, and you're also working oils into it at some point, yes. right? Breaking. So next comes breaking. You, you have to get this, this skin dry. Uh, I use, again, the spin cycle on my washing machine. Mm -hmm. um, you have to, to get, get it, all the excess moisture. To get, yeah, otherwise you hang it. Uh, but uh, skins of this type will start to assume positions. Um, you know, like, like, it would be door frame shaped if you put it on a door frame. Uh, so, so try and get as much, uh, moisture out, that, that especially like the paws, the, the feet and everything like that. And, and try and get that down to, you know, um, not dry to the touch, but, like but, damp. but yeah, lightly damp. Uh -huh. The, the inside of the, the skin, not the fur part. The yeah. fur should be more or less dry. At that point then, um, when you start to pull it and it starts to, to, turn white when you pull just based okay. off of the stress then yeah. yes you're good for putting in some oil now this is the point in which you're doing um, taxidermy for or whether you're doing leather for taxidermy or leather for coats uh, and scar you know like like wearable things mm -hmm. is the amount of breaking and the amount of oil that you're using uh -huh. okay. um, so oil then goes on hot oil this time it is hot because you want that to penetrate into the fibers that, that have been yeah. left vacant by the acids, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So so the acid is getting rid of all those those bonds, but then something replaces those bonds, and that is where tannins come in to replace that, but then even that itself dehydrates. You need more 
oil in there to plump that up. Okay. <clears throat> Is it a, a an inorganic type of oil? No, it's not. You know, it's a, mostly. I think it's vegetable, okay. vegetable based. Okay. okay, so you've got your skin. It's tanned. It's broken. Um. This also involves stretching beams and further thinning with knives and right, stuff. Right, which we'll get into in, in, in a more detailed yeah. version. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so, so now you've got your skin and it's all ready to go. We're just gonna set. What do we name him, Yoki? Yoki over here. Yot. 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 <laughs> we named him Yot. Oh, well, like Yot. Tote. So Yot is gonna go over there. More cool. yeah. Now it's time to figure more out Swedish. how how how. We're <laughs> How we're gonna how we're gonna proceed with this? So we've yeah. got we've got you. It's, we're we're gonna we're gonna mount him now. Uh huh. Um, do we just sew up the skin and just fill it up with polyfill? <laughs> you can, oh Sometimes you plushy you lovers, sew it up. <laughs> but you, the mouth obviously is open, and you just run through a field fast enough. The air will fill <laughs> it <laughs> and dry it at the same time. Or helium <laughs> if you want it floating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Derek, you, Nate you, and I are really gonna get. We're gonna get that that blue whale one day, and we're gonna sail in the sky through <laughs> <laughs> their dirigible whale. Here, that, but here's here's a good question though that yeah, gets yeah. asked a lot. Mm-hmm. Do you take the bones out of the out of Yotes' body and, and put them back in there? And you know, like, sometimes yes, and so, depending. So like, is there like still like blood and stuff inside no. of there? Not like, really, not. Them. The, the, this know, is very complicated. What's going on in there? Well, obviously the bones have already been removed so and boiled and cleaned. Back in? Yeah. Do they get? Yeah, we know. keep we set them aside. Because you know, people ask these things. There's a lot of different. There's a okay. So. But don't what go too be, deep into it because we're going to go into, we'll, we'll into this. F- we will flash mob this question. So, okay. firstly, um, okay, so sometimes you might build a form off of the bones. You might wrap them out with twine or something like that. You may build off of clay of the actual bones. You may make uh, an entire sculpture of the animal using the bones in the inside and then make a mold of that entire sculpture and use polyurethane foam in the end, you know, cast. Yeah. Uh, you could uh, be sculpting the whole form out of just polyurethane foam or polystyrene, depending. Be careful, kids. Polystyrene reacts real bad with certain glues um, and acetone. Uh, you can... Uh, good Lord. Yeah, it, it's not really polyfill. Yeah. It's, it's not like a stuffed animal. But if you are a plushie maker, then yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. Plushy, th- there's a brand of, of taxidermy that is, you know, like these people make plushies. And so basically they're posable stuffed animals that are made out of animals. Mm-hmm. That requires a lot more of that breaking, oiling process. Yeah. Whereas rigid taxidermy will not. Which, which I, th- I think for us, there's kind of a simple answer of, do we use the bones? No. No, not Because really. we want the bones. Whereas yeah. I think there are a lot of kind of commercial taxidermists who, if they have the bones... They don't give a shit. Like, if, if it's easier for them and that they have the form or whatever, yeah, fuck yeah. They're going to use that as an armature. Whereas we uh, we almost want all the bones, all the organs, the skin, everything, the meat sometimes to eat, consume. Oh, yeah. We want all of those things separated because we have a purpose for all of that. Yeah. Whereas I think there are a lot of taxidermists out there working commercially who... They only want the skin. That's all they care about. The muscle, they don't care about. The organs, they don't care about. The bones, they don't care about. Maybe the skull. But a lot of times, for us, the simple answer is, if we don't have to use the bones, we won't. This is like why we're really, I mean, we're really like Native Americans, so we really understand what they were going through. But you were such a fucking hipster. <laughs> Native Americans ran over a lot of coyotes. It's happened all the time. <laughs> yeah, didn't they run them off cliffs? Oh, not coyotes, but buffalo. Oh, yeah. The Americans was, did. I mean, that's pretty horrible. Well, no, no, the place was actually called Head Smashed In. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, that was like the, the name. Was the there area. a hotel called Head Smashed In? Yeah, well, they, there was. Uh, there should have been. Ah. But there was actually like a like a um, you know like a heritage center. There sort or of Damocles mallet <laughs> right. above every bed. <laughs> Well, apparently, when when you called there, they would say, "Head smashed in, may I help you?" <laughs> <laughs> Can we call right now on air? Uh, yeah, look it up. <laughs> um, so lots of yeah, lots of, and we'll get into that when when we talk about form building in the next uh, uh, episode with Nate and I, as we talk about the differences between 
making dresses and shirts and pants for people versus making people for dresses, shirts, and pants, which is kind of what taxi for me does. A lot of fun. Yeah. Um, what about eyeballs? Do you reuse the eyeballs? Do we get the question a lot. And freeze them and then, like, we get the question so often. It's like, you just put some lacquer Are they real eyeballs? Put, no, there's a glass <laughs> and sometimes acrylic. Um, always. Yeah. Always. Always. Yeah. There are <laughs> They're never, never real, real eyes. eyes. Ever. <laughs> ever, never, ever. Except for insects. That's yeah. it. Um, or real, real fucked up looking eyes. Yeah. You see, they might yeah. be real. I have used. Fucked up. No, I have used eyes from the actual animal desiccated because the prop needed to look like it was real bad. So I've done that. I've included the original eyes because I needed it to look really, really dead. And that's easy because very, yeah. very quickly when an animal dies, and that's one of the ways you can look at something on the side of it. Absolutely. No, yeah. Yeah. the eyes that's are sunken easy. in. They are. Kind of like a, a slightly deflated beach ball, how they, they are yeah. still very stiff. They have that structure of that original I mean, sphere, but they are, they the are not, humor as, they're not as plump as they once were. I was talking to a nurse, and she was saying when they go to harvest the organs, like, first thing you do is get a melon ball or pop those uh, corneas out, because mm-hmm. they're going to start deflating quickly. Very quickly, yeah. I mean, and they tell you that when you buy fish, that if you're buying a whole fish, you got to... That's the best way to tell. Is to look at the eyeballs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I you didn't really know that. that. Yeah, if you're gonna ever buy a whole fish, yeah. always look at its eyes. Yeah, and if you that can, go ahead and lick the eyes too, because you'll see the last. Them? Yeah, because you'll see if it's farm raised or if it's ocean. Because you can you'll see, see the last. Thing last. That yeah, bits yeah. Off. Wait, yeah. what? And you'll, you'll, see see the, can, you'll see the last thing. <laughs> that fish yeah, what's with any of it? Oh my god, I hate both of you. I was like, lick the eyeballs. Yeah, like you get that. You're like, let me see this fish. That's how you transfer the knowledge. Yeah. You can't, like, just go eyeball to eyeball. It's no, ridiculous. you can't do it. No, it's, it's so unhygienic, <laughs> too. I mean, why people ever did that in the 1700s? I don't, I don't know. So what's next on your list um, there? So, okay. Um, do you ever buy forms? Do I ever buy forms? I don't. Except for when they're on real special sale, because then I can oh. use them to carve other stuff. Okay. Um, but yeah, other taxidermists do, like maybe... Um, yeah, it's it, yeah. I think we kind of explained that in one of the earlier podcasts, too, is that yeah. they'll, they'll, the measurements are matching. I mean, we've got trade mags, you know, yeah. we've got all sorts of crap. I don't really use them because I don't care for that. Yeah, I think they're fun to look at. They're, they're fun, fun to look at. Yeah. But again, you know, hashtag taxidermy is fine art. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a picture to share with the world of you doing that. Um... Oh gosh. Okay, so so now you've got your form made. Yeah. You've got your sometimes. Y- y- sometimes y- it happens in a whole bunch of different phases: well, yeah. heads, then yeah. legs, or legs, then. I mean, it, yeah, it, you know, it's, it's all over the place. We're, 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 we're trying to go for some continuity here, man. Okay, Just good for it. Now we <laughs> magically got this entire form that's built. Yeah, it's magic. It's yes. magic for the listener. Okay, go. The listener but just needs built. to know. Keep this. Let's. That's important. Built magically. Built. It's built. Built it's magic, built. but we do build it. Go on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We build it with our magic wands. And so then, now you're going to take the skin and you're just going to wrap it around there and just sew her up and send her off? Oh, God, no. Oh, you don't want me to say it that way? So, so okay, <clears throat> so, what do you do next? You take the skin and you now, pop things in there and... Oh man, this is where it starts to get complicated. Depending on how com- how you've done your form, <clears throat> depends on what you're posing, what you're you, what you're posing. So it's what you're, possible that you may need to like put the head in first, and very then possible. Put the legs in and then attach the legs and the head to the. Sometimes, depending on what we're doing, especially with film props and things like that, then you need to be movable. That gets real complicated. Yeah. Do you ever segment, like actually remove? The leg, or do, you, do you yeah, actually, you, you, and there's undercuts that need to be made, especially if you're using something like a polyurethane form. You either need to make those cuts, like because you know when you're thinking about, like if you have a, a mannequin that's, that's standing with its arms kind of close together, you've you've got a lot of skin also that's that's in like the armpit that would just really kind of just need to be removed because it's just taking up space, or you need to drill into that form more space for that to. Yeah. to exist. And the same thing happens with the lips and stuff. When you're skinning, you have to do everything inside. You know. Yeah. You, the lips have to be turned inside out, I mean, like, all the way. And so you have to tuck that into something, and then it ends up being a groove that you cut. It's, it's, it's it depends on what the piece requires. That's, 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 uh, how you know what you're gonna be sewing back up. Right. Um, see, I don't wanna get too crazy about it, though. Mm-hmm. Cause I keep thinking of other things, like teeth. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. Teeth I typically like to cast. Uh-huh. Um, but but can also just be made out of wood, depending on what it is. Beavers, you know, they actually make some real nice ones out of wood and enamel. 
Or dealing with roadkill, a lot of times the skull's fucked up. You can use the real <coughs> teeth yeah. because the skull's fucked up. I mean, the only reason we wouldn't use the real teeth is because we want the skull. Yeah. But a lot of times working in roadkill, the skull's so fucked up. It's like, well, if I can yeah. harvest parts of that jaw. And that, that also makes teeth. a really good point, too, is like any skull that I find that is fucked up, I'll save the teeth yeah. and use those for later, too. Yeah. Um... So so you you you've gotten to the point where you've got all the parts of the form mm-hmm. inside the skin. Mm-hmm. Um and you've got this thing here and it's still open. Can we move to there? The thing? That's the, open. The, the, I don't know how to talk about this part of the thing, the taxidermy thing. So, mean, oh right so because got, we put this giant graduated cone up the ass and now it's the size of a basketball. We need to get it back down to the size of a plum. Is that what you're saying? No, okay. So you've got you've got your form inside uh-huh. of your skin. Yes. Okay. Or else against the hose again. So you've got your form inside of the skin. Mm-hmm. It's in there. You've got the head in there. You've got the eyes in there. You yeah. have an idea of how it needs to be posed. You uh, your idea better have happened before you build that form. Well, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. You were not helping me. I'm not I'm just around trying, like an I'm just trying to move forward. <laughs> I promised Mike forward. this wouldn't take more than 45 minutes. Uh, well. So, so, so you've got your animal. You're ready to sew. Uh-huh. Is that okay? Can we move on? To I well. Do you have something to add before you I have something me? to add only because the form is almost never made, carved, designed perfectly, you almost do it minimally so that you can go back and add clay or foam mm-hmm. or, you know, the spray foam or you're adding uh, insulation. Yeah, we insulation. actually will use I mean, anything. Yeah, just, or, or, or a, uh, what do they call it? Spongy Crayola clay? That Oh, I love that stuff. Yeah. It's my trade sheet, right? Don't tell anybody that we use Crayola clay. No, but no, that's everything. So, yeah, so you're building like, the form. It's kind of a, a very basic version of the anatomy of that animal without the skin, but you are leaving off specific things because it is really difficult to design and carve that form without the skin on it and make it look dynamic and real. Like those muscles are actually have stored up kinetic energy like they're about to move. So yeah. the easiest way to do that is to, you now we put the skin on, then we're adding clay, and we are sculpting from the outside. And Thank you, Mike. That was what I was trying to get out. Well, What's it's that? it's an <laughs> additive and reductive process, yeah, and, and that's that's well, and it's it's hard for me to answer that too, just because depending on what yeah what you find, it, it, it's it is so incredibly um, dependent on what you need that pose to look like. We will use everything, including plumber putty, if it seems as though it will achieve the result we want. We lost Nate. And we lost Nate. He's making cereal, it sounds like. <laughs> uh, Why are you in my phone as email Dan Sheets? I couldn't tell you. What? Because I didn't do that. I didn't do it. Have a Nagila. Okay, next. So, okay, so we've got our form and our skin, and they're looking good mm-hmm. together. They're hanging out together. Yep. But we've got some open holes. Mm-hmm. We probably should have fixed those before... Uh, no, I mean, like, some open holes, like, <laughs> like on the body. Like, we need to orifices. sew it up. We, can't we call just, those like, orifices. <laughs> Orify. Or are you Orify. referring to before you've sewn up your Yes, decision? I'm saying, so So you can't like so take like it down the back and put it in someone's, hole. someone's so. living room with like a hole in it. Okay, so you're talking so about, about you where you've made incisions. Yes. yes, where do you sew, how do you sew it up? Uh, well, how come okay. you're not following anything I'm saying? Because right? you're saying holes, and they're not holes. That's a hole. That's a seam. That's, that's, a, a, that's, a, lay, that's a layman's hole. Okay. Topologically, it's a hole. Okay, it's fine. It's a hole. So you've got, you've got open I'm not trying to be difficult. So you've got Open bit. So you're asking me how to sew. Okay. <laughs> what? Well, I'm not asking you. I know how. I know. Well, <laughs> I typically like to use something like the fake sinew you can get in bolts at uh, at Michaels or Hobby Lobby stuff like that for leather crafting. I love that stuff because it's heavily waxed. Otherwise, you use a very strong thread. Um, doubled up, uh, such as a button, you know, stitching thread that you would get at a fabric store. But wax that shit. Wax that with a little bit of beeswax. Why do you wax it? Uh, because it'll keep the, the, the thread from actually fraying. Going through leather and going through, through that, because you have a special needle you're using that's kind of razor sharp. It's triangular, 
triangular triangular blade special kind of thing. needle you should be using. A special yeah. needle, you, yeah, you, you really should be using that. Should and be. if you don't use that, then at least get the upholsterer's upholsterer's needle set and get some sandpaper and sharpen that curved needle. Mm -hmm. Something. <laughs> Uh, especially for a coyote, but with with some, I've actually had like totes, totes, uh, totes and goats. Um, he required a whole pot. I mean, like a, like a leather all, like because the, the yeah. skin on that was really really thick around the back edge. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, yeah, using using a nice thick thread with wax so that the thread doesn't fray, especially around the head of it, and it also guides. It just helps guide the. Uh, mm -hmm. The, the needle and thread through the hole um, and not collect as much fur because fur can get trapped if you're poking a hole in it and it just kind of gets all Crazy. gnarly. But the, the stitching process is basically, I don't know what the name of it is. There's a, well, there's a bunch of different stitches that you can yeah, use. Yeah, I think, I think they call what <clears throat> I have done, mm -hmm. I think they call it a quilt stitch. Yeah. I'm not absolutely certain though. We'd have to ask. Nick it's like tying up know. shoes, really, you know, yeah. because because uh, it, you know you do a couple stitches and then and then pull, you know, get all yeah. that to to, yeah. to sink together almost yeah. in a slight zigzag way. That yeah. that makes it so the fur, um, the fur that that line becomes invisible. Yeah. Same with any animal. Same with most leather I use. But then there's some other stitches that you would use to finish things off or to do more complicated things like sewing up holes. Like yeah. actual holes, like legit yeah, like holes. That you poked into it while you're skinning. Yeah, and then allowed to stretch, and then turn from a crescent shape into an actual round shape. Or when you know, like a, a rib punctures through. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now you've got your finished piece, and you can say, "Here, Dan blankets. I made you this. I hope you like your new well, friend Yotes." You gotta wait a minute. You gotta wait a minute. I mean, you gotta you gotta make sure that that shit's brushed. You gotta, you gotta be a hairdresser here. You gotta back brush that shit, let me tell you. And that's, that's, that's everybody. That's your tip on swans. This is why they all look so awful. You gotta back brush that neck. You gotta back brush that neck of the swan. Why do you have to do it here? Why can't you just give it to Dan and let him back brush it? I guess he could, but that would be real shitty customer service. <laughs> that would definitely be calling. HR. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, that, that, that is actually an important thing because when you're thinking about the, the, the leather that you've just made <laughs> is is drying slowly. But so it's not dry yet all the way. No, 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 no. It, sh that, no it, it should not be. You actually need to relax it sometimes when you're working on these things because you want it to conform to the form. Uh -huh. Glues, all that. We'll talk about that later. But um, but no, so so you, you do... It's going to be drying for a while. Okay. A long while. So for like... It's yeah, a thick thing. Yost still isn't dry yet. No, I mean, like, how long does it need to dry? Depends before on it's humidity. ready for Dan to put it in his living room. Depends on, on the demands of the fucking customer, oftentimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, when we're dealing with movie props and stuff like that, we don't have a lot of turnaround time. And so yeah. that comes with care instructions. Like, by the way, you actually have to do this. You have to move these joints from time to time. Yeah. Otherwise, it will seize up. Yeah. Um, because it's not ready yet. Because you took two and a half weeks away from my work time. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but, but it's, it, so long as it, it could take depending on the animal it really depends on the animal how long it takes for something like that to happen but the reason that you're back brushing is because as that leather is drying you want the fur to be in kind of a position that almost exaggerated to the angle of what you're wanting in the end so okay. that when you brush it down and it's got some fluff to it okay yeah. that makes sense yep so now Dan can put it in his living room now Dan can put it in his living room so long as he has a base so long as he has a cabinet maker to make a base Right. Your connections, I'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> or you can just call me. We do this too. Um, or you just, you know, because the display does matter depending on if you're, if you're doing something that's fairly large, then you want to go ahead and have thre threaded rods already inserted into the feet of whatever so that you can... Which would come along with... Form. Yeah, you can bolt that in. Yeah, yeah it comes the, that comes in the planning of the creation of the form. Yeah. I'm going to need to bolt it because it's going to be rotating on my ceiling. Yeah, see, that, that would require something different. So we'd want to kind of deal with that. Mm -hmm. Well, and there's also any painting that we didn't mention. Oh, mm -hmm. in internal yeah. electronics. Of the, of the nose. Nose, uh, yeah. Around the I eyes. Want to sometimes around the mouth. <laughs> little lacquer around there. <laughs> sometimes the, the skin, which normally you look at a picture of a coyote, is black around the eyes. Yeah. The nose is very dark and wet and shiny. It's a, it obviously does not remain that way after the tanning process, after the stretching and the drying. It's a very dead, dry, rough-looking... Oftentimes you have to paint it to get it darker and add some kind of either mm -hmm. a gloss paint or 
uh, a clear coat to get it to look a little wet and shiny. That's another. Okay. A- as well as, yeah, brushing back and, and doing the whiskers as well. Those. I'm going to want some eyeballs in it. Did we get eyeballs in it? Yeah, briefly. Mm-hmm. We wouldn't remember all right. very briefly, but. Thank you, sir. Yeah. And then Dan can put it in his living room. As I clean it, which is never. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. So when you give someone a completed specimen, shit, I don't give people shit. When someone purchases a That's completed specimen, that's better. <laughs> available by commission, metalingwithnature dot com or Jeremy Johnson five one three two zero seven nine seven six zero. Thank you. Um. First, I have two questions. Yeah. So don't get crazy. Okay. I'll be very docile. Um. What kind of care instructions come with it? Like, you know. You, you give it to him. Do you just tell him to sit it over in the corner? A lot of times I say, this is my phone number. You call me when it looks a little derpy. Okay. Uh, yeah. With with big ticket items, that comes involved. You know, like that, that comes included. It do so, as long as it's within a reasonable mileage, yeah. that I'll come in and, and, and do the dusting. But but basically, they get the instructions of, yeah, you know, if you got an air compressor, that's great. Um, but, you know, just do a little brushing. It's a, you, there is a line I have... Uh, your handcrafted taxidermy mount is intended to last you a lifetime, but let's talk about a few <laughs> a few dangers that your, your your mount might have, which is dermistead beetles. You know, like you start seeing um, beetles eat it, that's a bad thing. It's a real bad thing, and you want to deal with that. So I also do recommend, um, you know, doing like an insect bomb of all specimens of everything. Like yeah. put them in a room and then... <laughs> yeah. Um, well, every, every half year or so. For yeah. me, but but for them, they just need to do a little fodder and you check for insects because yeah. that that will really fuck your shit up. Yeah, insects. Okay, um, dusting. Could they do it? That you said an Pretty air easily. compressor. Could they just take a, a, a hair dryer and put it on cool setting? And <clears throat> yeah, they can do that. They can also brush. I mean, yeah. it, it it should be brushable completely. Yeah. Okay. Um, would you recommend that they keep it out of the sun? Yes, it would. Okay. Yeah, you yeah. don't need no additional bleaching. Yeah, I was going to say with bleach in the same way people's hair bleaches. Mm-hmm. So. Um, when meddling with nature provides, or when meddling with nature, when you purchase from meddling with nature, mm-hmm. do you get any kind of documentation for that specimen? Sometimes you get certificates that are really pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you get, you, you may or may not get wax sealed envelopes with care instructions on vellum. Yeah. Sometimes you may or may not get a bloody thumbprint from me or whoever makes your piece as a <laughs> signature. <laughs> oh, that doesn't creep most of you out. Um, sometimes uh, you you may even get a uh, little uh, little yeah. momentum mores of you know we, we like to add little touches. Yeah. Everybody that works in the dead arts, I think, adds touches. I've noticed that. Yeah. It was like here's a little something extra for you. Thanks for being a customer. It's like oh my god, look at that, it's rabbit foot or something like yeah. that or or. In the last case, just a bunch of dead insects that I didn't wear. I was like, oh, those butterflies. How fun. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, re- I have two examples. Recently, just did a commission for somebody of a heart, and I did a little handwritten tag. But it said, like, where the animal, where I mm-hmm. found it on the side of the road. It mm-hmm. had the intersection. So they had that. Yeah, so they knew that's, where. That's cool. They actually oh, yeah. knew where that animal was found. Yeah. And then another <laughs> was commissioned to do some rat heads. They were this person's pet. And then in addition to that, gave her these little rat heads on plaques. I also gave her like a rat tail that was like spiraled up and she was kind of weirded out by that it was like a little extra like alright I did this thing with the rat tail it was skin so it was like just the bone and I was really excited about it and she was like what the fuck it's like not what she bargained for but you know. I thought it was cool yeah we try yeah, to do a little I want one we try to do little um, nice things yeah <laughs> um, does anyone have anything else that they want to add because I feel like we've covered everything and I we've feel done like a table of contents. The, yeah. We're under the, the time limit that I was given too. Yeah. I feel like we've covered the table of contents. Obviously, yeah. we're going to be talking about all of these things more in depth during kind of a workshop series because we're getting the definitely getting the feedback that they, they, people want to hear more about what taxidermy actually is and how to do parts of it. And so we're we're going to do some of that, and we're also going to include a lot of the philosophical stuff uh, and and just the the you know we're going to cover um, all of. Uh, all of the, the Cincinnati Ballet season, I think, this year, actually, right? We're, we're all going to that, so we're going to be doing a separate podcast some, some about ballet. ballet reviews. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> really, really looking forward to that. It's just going to be such a great season. Mm-hmm. Just such yeah. a great season. Yeah, we, we got box seats. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I already bought a Cincinnati Ballet t-shirt. Yeah. 
Um, but you already cut off the arms and everything. He's like, yeah, crush it! Get the foam <laughs> finger. <laughs> um, so and so for for those of you who are listening or new listeners, um, you know we've become available on iTunes and Stitcher, and you know you can go onto mentalwithnature dot com and and listen to the podcast. Um, we are definitely trying our best to improve as much as possible. We're trying to get better. But we need you guys to tell us what, what what you think and how it's going and give us give us some idea of what you think about what we're doing so far. So if you could maybe send us some comments, some questions. Mm-hmm. Let us know what you're thinking about what we're doing here. Or if you'd rather just turn into a financial show, we could do that too. Talk about your Roth and your IRA mm-hmm. and your 501c3s yeah. and your... 401ks. I know a lot about home equity lines. Which needles to invest in? Mm-hmm. 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 It's not I, the I, one you're I, thinking of. I was, I was, I was thinking about investing in George, but you know. Mm. No. We're gonna go well, away. thank you very much for your listening, um, and we will be back. Possibly, if uh, we may just go ahead and release another podcast with Nate and I talking about form building in particular. Um, For the same time, we certainly will do it. It's just that we'll, yeah. Bye. Well, there you have it. Be sure to tune in next week when we will discuss something completely different, yet deceptively relevant. Please keep us in mind for all your naturalist and taxidermy needs at meddlingwithnature.com. But for now, we must be shoveling off. Thank you.